Number 8. The Bismarck Built in Germany in the late 1930s, the Bismarck was Europe's most formidable warship during its heyday. At nearly 800 feet long, she was one of Germany's largest ships at the time. And yet this fearsome battleship sank just eight days into her maiden voyage. During the mission to intercept Allied cargo ships carrying supplies to Britain, the Bismarck sank the HMS Hood. However, the small victory came at a huge cost. The British were infuriated, and they retaliated against the Nazis full force by sending the Royal Navy after the Bismarck. An all-out battle ensued, and in the end, the British won. The Bismarck sank to the bottom of the sea, and it remained missing until its rediscovery in 1989 by famed oceanographer Robert Ballard. Surprisingly, it was still in one piece after landing on an extinct underwater volcano and tumbling two-thirds of the way down the 3,300-foot slope. Based on the wreck's condition, it was clear that the vessel was well-built. It was also incredibly well-preserved, as the swastikas that were painted on it back in the 1940s were still visible. The hull was also still intact, indicating that it was fully flooded before it sank, because otherwise it would have been crushed by the pressure of the water as it plummeted to the seafloor. But the condition of the wreck doesn't really matter, since it's basically useless now. And while its sinking was disappointing for the Nazis, it came as great news to the Allies. Number 7. Admiral Graf Schwey As World War II approached during the mid-1930s, Germany built the 610-foot-long Admiral Graf Schwey as a symbol of the Nazis' naval power. She sank at least nine Allied merchant ships throughout her short-lived career. In 1939, the ship was struck around 70 times off the Uruguayan coast by warships from Britain and New Zealand, leaving 36 German sailors dead and more than 60 injured. Uruguay was officially neutral, but was on friendly terms with Britain. Captain Hans Langsdorff knew that if he let the ship undergo repairs, British officers would be allowed on board, and if the vessel stayed in port for more than three days, it would be confined for the remainder of the conflict. Repairs would take an estimated two weeks, so it wasn't really an option. Langsdorff ordered his crew to destroy all important equipment on the ship. The next day, they navigated into the harbor and deliberately scuttled the Graf Spee, which burned for the next two days before sinking 36 feet to the bottom of the ocean. Two days later, Langsdorff took his own life. During the early 2000s, an 880-pound eagle and a swastika statue were salvaged from the wreck. It's one of just a handful of known surviving examples of the Third Reich symbol and was a controversial reminder of the 9,000 Nazis who fled to South America to avoid prosecution for their war crimes. The salvage efforts were funded by a businessman named Alfredo Echegaray, who claimed he spent over $5 million retrieving artifacts from the Graf Spee over a 30-year period. A court ruled that Echegaray legally owns half the statue and that the government owns the other half and Echegaray accused Germany of pressuring the Uruguayan government to keep the sculpture hidden from the public. He argued that the German government has every right to bury an artifact from a dark chapter in history, but that it should at least pay him his fair share in order to do so. The art gallery housing the statue claimed that it was receiving offers for Echegaray's share of ownership, which is supposedly valued at up to $15 million, but the former head of the National Heritage Commission, William Ray Ashfield, scoffed at the estimate. He was one of several people who thought that the statue should go to a museum and be displayed in an educational, but not glorifying, historical context. Others wanted to see the Nazi relic destroyed. The battle over the statue appears to be ongoing, but according to the last update, a court decided that the relic should be auctioned off, leaving many concerned that it may fall into the hands of neo-Nazis. Number 6. Yamato the 862-foot-long Yamato and her sister ship, the Musashi, were built for the Imperial Japanese Navy in the years leading up to World War II. They were the heaviest and most powerfully armed battleships ever constructed. Both vessels were built in complete secrecy, despite their enormous size. They were launched in 1940, and the Yamato was commissioned the following year in a private ceremony to prevent the Allies from catching on to the ship's existence. The Yamato was at least 30% larger than any other battleship ever built, and both the Yamato and the Musashi were armed with the largest guns ever fitted to a naval ship. Known as the Type 94 naval gun, each weapon was more than 69 feet long and weighed over 147 tons. They were capable of firing explosive and armor-piercing shells up to 26 miles. However, even though the Yamato was an extremely impressive ship, it fell short in some ways. 
Her engines were underpowered, giving her a relatively low top speed of 31 and a half miles per hour. The ship also burned a lot of fuel, and there was a lack of ammunition on board. For these reasons, the Yamato spent a year anchored at Truck Lagoon in the Central Pacific, where she didn't participate in any full-scale warfare. The Yamato fought in several major battles against the Americans throughout 1944, including the Battle of the Philippine Sea and the Battle of Leyte Gulf. Around that time, it became clear that Japan was losing the war. On April 7, 1945, American forces pelted the Yamato with bombs. Hundreds of crew members died in their attempts to right the vessel, and those who survived were eventually ordered to abandon ship. Just minutes later, the Yamato began to capsize. It soon rolled over and was blown open in a massive explosion. In the end, only 280 members of the ship's 2,778-man crew survived. Number 5. USS Iowa the 887-foot-long USS Iowa served as the lead ship in the Iowa-class fleet of American battleships. The vessel was built from 1940 to 1942 at the New York Naval Yard. She was the only Iowa-class ship to serve in the Atlantic Ocean during the Second World War. Iowa-class vessels were designed to intercept the fastest enemy naval ships. They were also meant to act as the fast wing in traditional battle lines alongside slower battleships. In addition to being fast, the Iowa was fitted with a vast array of weapons, including anti-aircraft guns to counter the growing threat of attacks from overhead. Her main battery was fitted with nine 16-inch 50 caliber Mark VII guns, which were capable of firing 2,700-pound armor-piercing shells as far as 23 miles. The ship's secondary battery consisted of 25-inch 38 caliber guns in twin mounts, which could fire at targets up to 14 miles away. After her shakedown cruise in early 1943, the Iowa sailed to the waters of Newfoundland, Canada to counter the threat of the German battleship Tirpitz. Later that year, she transported President Franklin D. Roosevelt and several of his staff members to Algeria while heading to a strategy meeting among the Allies called the Tehran Conference. During that trip, the Iowa barely avoided being hit by a torpedo, thanks to a warning that came just in time for the ship's crew to make a hard turn out of its path. The torpedo exploded in its wake, and the vessel was left undamaged. After that, the USS Iowa served primarily in the Pacific arena. She performed incredibly well in battle, earning 11 service stars throughout her career. The ship was decommissioned for the first time in 1949, only to be recommissioned two years later in 1951 during the Korean War. She was decommissioned again in 1958, but re-entered service for the final time in 1984 when she underwent naval gunfire support qualifications and refresher training. The Iowa was retired for good in 1990 as the Soviet Union collapsed. At the time, Russia became less of a perceived threat to the U.S. and to the West in general, and America downsized its military budget accordingly. Today, the ship operates as a floating museum off the southern coast of California. What other purposes do you think a battleship from World War II could serve these days? Let us know in the comments down below. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. Number 4. USS Amesbury The U.S. Naval Destroyer Escort called the USS Amesbury was built in Massachusetts during World War II. She wasn't one of the more well-known ships that served in the conflict, and at just 306 feet long, she was far from the largest. However, she made her mark in history during the Allied invasion of Normandy in 1944, in what is now known as D-Day, and was eventually rewarded with a battle star for her service. In 1945, the ship was converted into a high-speed transport for carrying the men of an amphibious unit called the Underwater Demolition Team. After making landings in Japan, Korea, China, and Guam, the Amesbury proceeded to Green Cove Springs, Florida, where she was decommissioned and placed in reserve. After that, the ship never served again. It was struck from the Naval Register in 1960, and in 1962 it was sold to a Marine salvager named Chet Alexander. He made plans to sink the Amesbury in a deep part of the Gulf of Mexico as an artificial reef, but it ran aground while being towed to its final destination. There wasn't enough time to refloat the ship before a passing storm came through, and the harsh weather literally broke it in half. The two sections came to rest in about 25 feet of water, and they now sit about 600 feet apart from each other. Its gun mount and anti-aircraft guns are located about 50 feet away from the vessel's port side. Today, the Amesbury is an artificial reef and serves as a diving site known as Alexander's Wreck. Number 3. HMS Duke of York 
Built in Scotland during the late 1930s, the 745-foot-long HMS Duke of York was a King George V-class battleship of the British Royal Navy. She was equipped with a powerful battery consisting of 10 14-inch MK7 naval guns, which were capable of firing 1,590-pound shells, vastly outperforming any previously built British weapons. After entering service in 1941, the Duke of York transported British Prime Minister Winston Churchill to the United States to meet President Franklin D. Roosevelt. Throughout 1942, she served as an escort for merchant convoys and also operated as a patrol ship along Arctic shipping routes to the Soviet Union. Later that year, the Duke of York supported the Allied landings in North Africa, during which time she came under attack by Italian aircraft on several occasions. But luckily, the damage was minimal and the ship was eventually sent back to Britain to be refitted. In 1943, she participated in the Allied invasion of Sicily, known as Operation Husky. Then she went on to provide cover for small operations in Norwegian waters. The Duke of York continued to assist in Allied missions and provided cover for merchant convoys throughout the rest of the conflict. She was laid up in 1951, and in 1957, she was scrapped for parts, bringing her eventful career to an ironically quiet end. Number 2. Richelieu the French Richelieu-class battleships were built during the mid to late 1930s as a response to Italy's Littorio-class ships. Launched just before World War II, the lead ship, known as the Richelieu, was heavily armed, heavily armored, and was extremely fast. As it became clear that Germany was going to win the Battle of France, the French Navy sailed the 813-foot-long Richelieu down to West Africa in order to keep her out of Nazi hands. While there, she was repeatedly attacked by the British as part of their efforts to pressure the battleship to join the Free French Naval Forces. The plan eventually worked, and the Richelieu was handed over to Free French control in 1942 following the Allied invasion of North Africa. After undergoing an extensive upgrade in the U.S., the ship served under the British Royal Navy. In 1944, she was deployed to the Indian Ocean for operations against the Japanese. While there, the Richelieu participated in numerous bombardment operations. She was also part of the force that liberated Singapore following the Japanese surrender in September 1945. After the war, the ship was used primarily for training exercises. She was placed in reserve in 1956, then was utilized as a stationary training and barracks vessel until 1967. The following year, the Richelieu was towed to La Spezia, Italy, where she was scrapped. Number 1. USS South Dakota The American-made battleship known as the USS South Dakota was built for the U.S. Navy during the 1930s. Measuring 680 feet long, she was constructed after the Washington Treaty System began to break apart, which had imposed limits on the size of naval ships in the wake of World War I to prevent a global arms race. In addition to being fast, the ship was equipped with some of the most advanced anti-aircraft artillery of the time. She entered service in mid-1942 and saw extensive action throughout the Second World War, including the Guadalcanal Campaign in the South Pacific. During the Second Naval Battle of Guadalcanal, the South Dakota came under heavy Japanese fire. She sustained over two dozen hits, but somehow managed to stay afloat. After that, she returned to the U.S. for repairs, then served briefly with the British Royal Navy, protecting merchant convoys en route to the Soviet Union. The South Dakota returned to the Pacific in 1943. She participated in several major military operations and battles, including the Gilbert and Marshall Islands Campaign, the Mariana and Palau Islands Campaign, the Philippines Campaign, and the battles of Iwo Jima and Okinawa. She was later transported to the Philadelphia Naval Shipyard after the end of the war and was eventually scrapped in 1962. In your opinion, who do you think had the most technologically advanced battleships during World War II? Let us know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye!